Hello and welcome everyone. Um, my name is Stacey Dixon. I'm a global black belt. I focus on Microsoft Entra permissions management, which is the topic of today. Um, today I am with two of my colleagues. Um, I'll let them introduce themselves. So, um, Samba. Yeah, thank you, uh, Stacey. Good morning, everyone. My name is Samba Kuita. I'm a senior technical business development manager at Microsoft. My mission is to work with um, our customers and partners uh, to better understand our security offerings. Uh, we do focus on what we call our, our leading edge security solution, one of which is uh, Microsoft Intra Permission Management. So thank you very much for joining us. Over to you, Prakash. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I am Prakash Narayanamurthy, a partner in Wipro Microsoft Security Practice. I'm a Microsoft Certified Cybersecurity Architect. Thanks for joining. I'm looking forward to a great session. Over to you, Stacey. Thanks, Samba. Thanks, Prakash. Um, so in today's webinar, we're going to be talking about Microsoft and Wipro, how we can help you to quickly discover um, your single or multi-cloud permissions risks um, and develop a strategy around how to control and uh, to mitigate permissions risks with Microsoft Entra permissions management. You'll also see a, dem a demo from um, Samba a little bit later in the presentation. Um, just before we get started, I'd just like to mention a few logistics. So the webinar today is going to be about 45 minutes in length. Um, it's going to include 10 minutes open Q&A at the end where you'll be able to come off mute um, and ask some questions. Um, and we're broadcasting this through Microsoft Teams. It's being recorded and after the recording will be shared with all of you after the event. If you joined us today without registering, please do so now on the link in the chat window or in order to receive the recording, um, you, you'll definitely need to register. So please feel free to post any questions that you've got in the chat window too throughout the webinar. We'll try and answer them as we go along. And finally, thank you for adhering to the Microsoft Code of Conduct that's also posted in the chat window. Um, so without further ado, housekeeping rules done, uh, let's get started. So the agenda for today's session is broken down into four. We're going to do an introduction as to what Cloud Infrastructure Entitlement Management, or KIM, is and Microsoft Entry Permissions Management. Samba's going to go ahead and show you a demo, and then Prakash is going to talk to you about how to get started, how to adopt, and how to operationalize. Um, and then I'll just run through a very quick summary, and we'll get into the Q&A. So... Microsoft Entra is a new product family for those of you that haven't seen it or don't know, um, and this is where Microsoft's identity and access products are housed. So Azure AD, uh, with all of its capabilities, remain absolutely the same, all the things you're familiar with, um, and it continues to be the identity solution for our customers and partners. Then we've got Microsoft Entra Permissions Management, the topic of the day, um, and this is Cloud Infrastructure Entitlement Management, or KIM solution, um, which provides visibility into permissions assigned across infrastructure resources in multiple clouds. Microsoft acquired a leader in the KIM space around July 2021, um, and since then what we've been doing is going through a process of integrating that technology into the Microsoft stack, um, and it's been rebranded as Entra Permissions Management, which forms part of Microsoft Entra. Then we've got Microsoft Entra Verified ID. This is a managed service for verifiable credentials. It provides a way to issue and verify digital credentials with end users or organizations as part of an identity verification process in essential, um, in essence, really portable credential. Now we're absolutely honored to announce um, that Microsoft has been named as a leader in the 2022 Gartner Magic Quadrant for Access Management for Microsoft Azure Active Directory. Um, and this is obviously forming part of Microsoft Entra. We have you, I suppose, really to thank um, as our customers who guide our strategy, our product innovation. You engage with us so deeply in co-creating modern and secure identity solutions that, you know, you really provide us that invaluable feedback that helps us continually raise the bar. Um, and it's this partnership with you that's propelled us to be recognized as a leader for the sixth year in a row. And it inspires us to grow our product portfolio and introduce innovative solutions that our customers can do more with less. So Microsoft Entra, as I said, was a rebranding of our IAM solutions because it paves that way for the next generation of identity solutions that can help any organization when it comes to protecting access to all of applications, all, all of the resources for, for all of your users. Um, 
effectively securing every identity, including your employees, your customers, partners, applications, devices, and so on across all of your environment. The ability to discover and right size permissions, manage access life cycles, and ensure least privilege access for any identity. And most importantly, to keep users productive with simple signing experiences, intelligent security, and unified administration. And as we continue to grow our footprint in the cloud, we've got many challenges to overcome, which require that next generation of identity solutions like cloud infrastructure entitlement management or KIM. Let's look at some of the challenges that we face today um, that are associated around cloud identity risk. The adoption of multi-cloud um, has brought about a lot of benefits to, to us as organisations, but at the same time has created a new attack surface that just didn't exist five years ago. So in fact, over 40,000 permissions exist across the key cloud platforms that we use, and nearly 50% are estimated to be high risk. And that means that they could cause, you know, serious damage if used improperly, things like service disruption or even data exfiltration. And then to make matters worse, we've discovered that more than 90% of identities, that's both human identities and non-human identities, use less than 5% of the permissions that are granted to them to perform their daily tasks. And that leaves the other 95% of unused permissions wide open to accidental misuse or intentional exploitation of permissions. So as that number of identities and permissions that are accessing the multi-cloud infrastructure continues to grow, so does the risk. And it poses um, you know, a, a huge risk to, to our organization and the infrastructure that we have in the cloud. And really the biggest problem is the, you know, for, for identity and security teams, they just don't have enough granular visibility into their identities, the permissions that they have, and the resources that they're accessing across their entire infrastructure. And then given that each cloud infrastructure uh, follows its own access control operating model, it's become very, very difficult and very time consuming for admins to implement a consistent security policy across cloud platforms. And then ultimately, these trends have, have really increased the risk of accidental or even malicious permission misuse, with one line scripts having the ability to cause serious damage if used improperly. So if we think about you know, a large organisation that's currently experiencing an outage, unfortunately, it can become a practice um, to give certain people super admin access to subscriptions or other resources in an effort to resolve that outage as quickly as possible. And once the outage has been mitigated or resolved, those permissions are rarely reverted. So this dangerous delta between permissions that are granted and permissions that are used is what we call the permissions gap. The larger the gap and the more menacing the attack surface. But the good news is um, that the risks associated with this gap are totally avoidable. Eliminating this gap is the problem that cloud infrastructure entitlement management or enter permissions management can help you mitigate. Now, please don't read this slide word for word right now. There's a lot of words on there, lots of text. Um, this was just some research our team did when we were looking into how organisations try um, today to mitigate challenges around lateral movement and privilege escalation. Now, lateral movement and privilege escalation is a common conversation that we have with our customers. It is certainly a growing concern to organisations as they transition to the cloud. And, you know, if, if you were to think about one piece of your cloud infrastructure being compromised, the question around, you know, how far can an attacker actually reach once that's compromised? We see a lot of notable attacks to cloud environments that have resulted because of a vulnerable application that's been publicly available and it served as an entry point. And from there, attackers have been able to move laterally throughout an environment, exfiltrate sensitive data, or even use their account for the, their own purposes, such as you know crypto mining, coming in after the weekend and finding a huge Azure bill because somebody's been crypto mining the environment, or you know what's worse, locking down with ransomware as well. So when an attacker has access to cloud infrastructure, they search for misconfigurations to enable their next actions. This might be solidifying a position by persisting permissions, might be impairing cloud defenses or escalating their privileges. The way that most organizations 
organisations detect and um, respond to this today is quite manual by taking some of the actions that we've researched and listed on screen here. With the right security tools, though, this, the kind of misconfigurations that, that leave a cloud environment vulnerable can be mitigated. And that's one of the reasons that industry analyst Gartner introduced the category of KIM, Cloud Infrastructure Entitlement Management. So by working towards a zero trust security model, organisations can reduce their permissions gap and secure their environment. The problem is around implementing lease privilege access policies it being almost impossible to do manually at cloud scale. So in order to efficiently reduce permission risks, organisations need to make a shift from static processes that grant permissions based on job roles and assumptions to more of a dynamic solution that can right-size permissions based on um, activity and historical usage data. By ensuring identities only have access to permissions and resources that they need to perform their day-to-day -day job functions, um, it means that they can really enhance their security posture and protect critical data from any potential breaches. Then, um, when identities need permissions for a limited amount of time, these should really be assigned temporarily on an as needed basis and then automatically revoked at the end of a specified period. And lastly, in closing that permissions gap, it's not a one time action. Automated processes have to be implemented to continuously monitor activity and prevent that permissions creep. By implementing these and relying on activity data, we can improve our security posture and really move towards zero trust without disrupting the ability um, to, you know, the, for our identities to perform what they need to do on a daily basis. Although Kim is a relatively new category for our industry, uh, there are three immediate benefits today. The first is around risk reduction. So organisations can manage access risk with time bound controls and have that necessary governance across all entitlements across a multi-cloud infrastructure environment. The second is around analytics. So customers can really benefit from machine learning and analytics that are provided by Kim or Cloud Infrastructure Entitlement Management in order to detect anomalies in account entitlements such as accumulation of privileges um, and dormant or unnecessary permissions. And the third is around enforcement, that ability to really take control, to be able to remediate, taking a least privilege approach. And this is where Microsoft Entra Permissions Management can help you manage the complexity of a multi-cloud environment and automate permissions management. So you can manage permissions based on historical usage and activities and see what identities need, not what you think they might need. Microsoft Entra Permissions Management fully supports multi-cloud, meaning that it works with all the major service um, providers in the cloud, such as Google Cloud, AWS and Microsoft Azure. And then Microsoft Entry Permissions Management provides that comprehensive, streamlined view into every action performed by every identity on every resource so that you can have a look at where your permission risks lie within your cloud infrastructure. There are five capabilities that Samba is going to touch on at a high level and walk you through today um, in his demo. And it starts around entitlements discovery. And this is where Microsoft Entry Permissions Management is going to automatically go out, it's going to discover, it's going to inventory all of your identities and access entitlements across your cloud environment. Into threat assessment, once you have your inventory, the tool will automatically score those identities it has found based on how many permissions they have, how high risk those permissions are, and what reach they have across your resources so that you can begin to identify where there are excessive, unused or toxic privileges. Then you can begin to privilege right size and take automated remediation actions. You do this by receiving active recommendations from the solution itself that help you to execute some either you know, quick actions or create custom policies or templates to give you just enough to give just enough privileges and just in time access to the identities within the environment. And then finally, monitoring and governance to ensure that once you've reached an acceptable baseline for your identities and permissions that they have, that you're able 
possible to ensure the cloud identity risk posture is maintained and have access to all the necessary reporting and dashboarding that you need. And with that, what I'm going to do is hand over to Samba and he's going to get into um, the demo and show you some of these capabilities. So over to you, Samba. All right. Perfect. Thank you very much, Stacey. So I'll just uh, go ahead um, and, and share my screen. So the way I was thinking about this demo is really to walk you through the um, different key uh, capabilities that we have. And um, as Stacey mentioned, um, today the intro uh, is a name for all things related to our identity and access management solution. So there is a new portal that is called intro.microsoft.com. So in this portal, um, and if I click here, for example, on the uh, permission management, which is our main topic today, uh, this will redirect me to the intra, intra permission management uh, portal. Um, so you still have, um, as we speak today, the CloudNox name in the URL, but this is something that uh, is likely to change um, in the next month or so. So here on the dashboard, um, this really gives you a good understanding on where we are when it came to the uh, permission risk. So there is the this metric or this indicators that we call the permission creep index. That basically just tells you, um, you know, how many uh, high risk permissions you have uh, in organization. So as Stacy mentioned previously, uh, we do support a AWS, a GCP, uh, and Azure, of course. Uh, in my demo environment, I do have the uh, two cloud service providers, but of course, uh, it's also possible to add uh, GCP. So if I move on here to Azure, for example, you will see that I also do have a permission keep index, but that is less. That is around um, the 70 here compared to 90 that I had on the AWS. Uh, and also in this dashboard, I do have here a good understanding, for example, uh, of the inactive users that I have, uh, the super users, um, you know, and even some information about uh, users that do not have MFA enabled. So now let's go ahead um, and click here, for example, to get a better understanding uh, on the permission creep index, which again uh, is really a great indicator to understand where you are when it's come to permission assign versus a permission really used um, in, in, in the organization. So if I look at here in my Azure environment, let's just move on here to AWS and look at the uh, PCI. So I would get here um, my total number of users and how many users have high, medium, and low of permissions. And as you can see here, my permission creep index is 99, which is really the maximum. Um, and so by taking into consideration the uh, recommendation from the tool, you will be uh, able to reduce the PCI over time, uh, reducing at the same time uh, your overall attack surface. So now, if you want to dig a little bit deeper and really understand uh, all the details about the permissions, um, I'll go ahead and click here on analytics. And here you will see different names, and I'm sure you're very familiar with those names. Uh, we'll talk here about Alice, Bob, uh, which are very famous in all things related to identity. So here we can see for Alice, for example, that the uh, PCI is 100, which basically is the maximum. Um, we also understand here, uh, you know, for how long this permission is high and how many individual permission were, were assigned to this particular user. So because this is a global admin um, in my AWS environment, this also shows me that in AWS, I do have an individual 10,745 individual permission that can be assigned uh, to a particular user. So if you're using AWS and maybe assigning you know, roles uh, that your user may be uh, you know, leveraging on a day-to-day -day basis, please be informed that there is a total of 10,000, but in fact, your users may use much less uh, individual permission. Hence, uh, the usage of the uh, solution uh, like intra permission management can really help to reduce the overall risk. So now let's um, also understand here uh, the different individual permissions that are unused for Alice but assigned. Um, and also we get here a good understanding of the user group. She's an admin. Uh, the AWS type of roles uh, that are configured and the different policies for this particular uh, user.
Okay, so this really um, you know, shows you the uh, different uh, permissions assigned, uh, the usage, the last time the permission was executed. Um, and also, if I go ahead uh, and check in my Azure environment, let's go ahead and use, for example, uh, this user. So here we'll see in Azure, uh, you know, we have here for this particular user a total of 12,000 unused permission. Uh, where I, this particular user, have only used uh, 56 uh, over the last um, 90 days, I would say. So now Tom comes the question, uh, why do I have so many permissions assigned where the user is only um, kind of leveraging 56? Um, and so by you know, having this information, we can really create uh, a new role with just enough permission for this particular user. So this is what we are going to see uh, here in the remediation. Um, I will go ahead and check for the permissions, for example. I want to check for uh, Stephen Blue, who is one of my users in my environment. So here I can see that he has uh, you know, the ACO Pro um, front role. And I can actually check that uh, by going to my Azure environment and also verifying for Stephen Blue that in fact, uh, he has this uh, ACR uh, pool permission role. But maybe this user is not really using or leveraging that. And I do want to go ahead and remove uh, this permission and this role because this user is not really using it. So I can do that by going here and just click, I want to remove this permission and submit. So by doing that, depending on how you configure your EPM, there is something that is called controller permission, which really um, enable you to automatically interact with Azure or AWS GCP and remove the permission. But you might also be in a situation where you leverage uh, you know, some DevOps solutions, or maybe there is another team uh, that is in charge uh, of changing the configuration. So in this case, you can generate the script and pass the script over to another team that is uh, in charge of implementing the uh, modification. In my environment, I do have the right permission, so I'll just go ahead uh, and click Execute. So this will automatically uh, submit the task uh, on my Azure environment and will remove the ACL pool uh, permission that I have assigned to my user. So as you can see here, um, this task um, is currently running. It usually takes 10 to 15 seconds on average uh, to go and remove the permission. And we are going to check um, in a few seconds to see if the ACL pool permission has been really removed uh, for the Stephen Blue user. So we also have here the um, ability to go and create a new role based on the uh, real usage uh, of a particular user. So let's go ahead and click here, create new role. Um, I want to do that in my Azure environment. Uh, and also I want to create this role based on the activity of the user. So I'll go ahead and say, let's say um, for the last 90 days, for example, I will choose this particular user that I want to uh, really uh, focus on. I'll click next, um, and here it will also give me, uh, and I can always decide to add additional uh, permissions or remove, but based on the historical usage, we know that this, this particular user has been using uh, you know, those different permissions over the last couple of uh, 90 days, I would say. So if I say here perm of 01, for example, and I will click next, so this will here um, also automatically uh, give me here the JSON file and the script that I can again give to uh, any DevOps team or, or, or you know, security team that is just modifying the configuration. Or because I have the controller status enabled, I can go ahead and click Submit. So this will again go and automatically create uh, a new role based on the historical usage uh, for my particular user. So remember the first demo use case, I did remove the ACL pool permission uh, for this user. 
let's go and refresh the page to see if uh, this user still has the permission or not. So as you can see here, uh, the wall has been uh, automatically removed. Okay, so now let's get back um, to the um, Entra Permission Management uh, Console. So we've seen how to create a new wall uh, based on the usage over the last 90 days. We've seen also this use case where I can go and remove a particular permission from um, a user. I also do want to go here and let's say, for example, we've assigned uh, the 500 permission for a particular user, but we do need uh, for a specific uh, you know, period of time assign another permission. Or this can also be used for a service principle. For example, you have a script that is running uh, every Monday uh, between 10 to 12, and you do want to assign this permission only uh, during this period. So to do that, uh, we can here uh, go ahead um, and here I'll see the list uh, of my requests. Um, I can go and say here, create a new request, select the authorization system type. Let's say it, it's Azure. Select here again the um, authorization system. I will choose this particular user and say I want to request uh, a role. And so for this user, let's say we go and, and use um, Azure Arc and Kubernetes, for example. I'll click next. And here um, I can enter information about you know, my request summary, uh, why I want to have this uh, particular roles, um, and also the schedule. So is it something that I want to have ACP and for four hours, or this is a recurring type of task that I'm doing? So um, I need that, let's say, uh, you know, weekly, uh, every Monday uh, at 12 for two hours, for example. I can go ahead and say uh, schedule, um, and here I can always type uh, migration, for example. Um, click submit. So this will, for now, send me an email uh, with the OTP code uh, that I can use to create this request. So we are also working to integrate uh, this uh, MFA feature uh, with our Microsoft Authenticator app. So if I move on here to my mailbox, I will see that I have received uh, you know, a new uh, OTP code that I can definitely use here uh, to validate uh, my request. So this will go ahead uh, and create uh, automatically a request for me uh, with the list of people um, that can validate uh, this, this particular request. So in this case, it's myself. Um, if I move on here to request, I will see the uh, you know, all the requests that I have pending uh, with the all the roles. And I can, if you look at here, it has been submitted a few seconds ago. I can approve. And again, this will also send me an OTP uh, to also uh, validate that. Okay. So the next thing that I wanted to show you here very quickly um, is all the al al alerting feature that we have in Microsoft Intra Permission Management. So here we can uh, you know, create some alerts uh, based on some activities, but we can also leverage uh, the machine learning and the uh, you know, statistical anomaly that the system can detect. Um, and let's say, for example, we want to go ahead and create a rule-based anomaly, so we'll trigger a new one. And here we have a predefined uh, list uh, of activities that may look suspicious. So for example, we can say here in a world source uh, access for the first time or in identity my environment uh, performing a, a particular task for the first time. You also want to be alerted. So as of today, this will be sent by email, but in our roadmap, we are looking at ways to integrate uh, using the APIs, our intra permission management with our SIM solution Sentinel but once the API will be available, so this integration can also be done uh, with third-party SIM solutions or even integrate with ServiceNow, for example. So on the alerting, we can also create some alerts based on statistically uh, you know, anomaly. If I go ahead here and create a um, new alert trigger, so again, here I have a predefined list of identity performing a high number of tasks, for example, or identity performing uh, you know, task with unusual results, unusual timing, 
And these are all information that can be very useful uh, for the security teams. So I also wanted to show you here very quickly uh, the reporting capabilities that we have in this tool. Um, so this is something that, uh, again, uh, Prakash will talk about how to get started, but we do have here the permission uh, analytics reports that will really give you a very good understanding uh, you know, of all the threats that identity threats that we have detected in our sources, uh, you know, inactive identities, uh, super identities as well. Um, and if I go here and click on the summary, uh, this will also give me a graphical representation uh, of my PCI score distribution, uh, for example, um, and also the identities that, that can answer uh, you know, one or more security tools. So this was, again, a very high-level overview that I wanted to show you today on the different capabilities that we have in our Microsoft Internet Permission Management. There is a lot of more uh, to cover, so we'll be more than happy uh, you know, with Wipro and the whole Microsoft team to work with you uh, to deliver more uh, you know, deep dive uh, session. So with that, I want to hand over to uh, Prakash. Prakash, over to you. Thanks, Sabha, for the great walkthrough. So let me click my slides. Okay. I hope you can see the screen, right? Yes. All right, so, um, so we looked at uh, what is APM and then how it can uh, how it can solve your challenges with the multi cloud, and also somewhat after uh, briefly talked about um, the APM portal dashboard and the capabilities. I quickly wanted to um, talk about how an enterprise can start, adopt, and operationalize APM, and then can start continuous monitoring uh, your um, the permission uh, gaps and alerts and mitigate the risk. So uh, Microsoft offers a uh, 45 days trial. Uh, so, um, so if you are already using Azure Cloud, um, you can, um, can go ahead and activate the 45 days trial. And, and with that uh, trial license, you'll be able to do a pretty quick uh, risk assessment um, on Azure. And also you can connect to um, the uh, AWS and GCP projects. And, and this will help you to bring um, you know, all the data into uh, the uh, auto permission management and, and provide a greater visibility into how your permissions are actually uh, used. And also the, the PCI index, right? the, the permission creep index will help you to uh, look at um, you know, how, um, what are the key uh, risky accounts, and then you can also plan for um, you know, mitigation techniques. Right? So um, with, with this uh, quick assessment, you know, you will be able to um, identify your um, you know, high risk assets and, and the high risk identities and plan for a full uh, adoption roadmap. So in the quick uh, uh, the risk assessment, right? So what you will typically get uh, is, um, you know, uh, all the identities, uh, the permission a creep index code, you will get it, and then you'll be able to uh, take a look at the top uh, five or the top five, 10 um, accounts and take a deep look into uh, the permissions uh, leverage of that. And then also, you know, um, you'll be able to uh, see the, the uh, entitlement usage, for example, users and groups, how they are uh, used. And also you will get the uh, stale accounts, for example, any accounts or uh, system identities or uh, human identities which are not used for let's say 90 days right so you will get to see that and you'll be able to take an action right so this um, the quick risk risk assessment will be able to give give you the uh, holistic idea of you know how your cloud permissions are leveraged and uh, once you get that uh, you can start going for a full adoption uh, so in the full adoptions you know you will uh, typically uh, if you are in a multi cloud uh, uh, you know, customer, uh, you will be able to onboard uh, the the Azure subscriptions, you know, multiple subscriptions, uh, AWS um, accounts, and and GCP projects, and you know that will bring all the data and give you um, the uh, risk, uh, you know, the posture. With that, you will be able to start doing the right sizing, right? So right sizing is is a significant activity you you will be doing uh, in the adoption state. And also, you will uh, take a look at uh, your coexistence, um, you know, solutions like uh, any existing IGA solutions or PAM solutions 
So before you start rolling out any remediation, um, you know, uh, functions. And then, you know, uh, uh, we look at from the three core areas uh, discovery. So where you connect all the, uh, you know, authoritative systems like public cloud and start getting the insights. Then get into the remediations where you, know, you will be configuring the rules and policies, you know, to uh, to automatically take an actions throughout the pilot, which Samba uh, touched upon. Also, you have a one-click uh, remediations where administrators can go and and and, and remediate, um, you know, any risks, uh, right? So uh, this will basically uh, revoking a high-risk um, task or, or any uh, delete uh, task, right? For example, you know, if you see an anomaly detected for a particular account and you want to make that account as a read-only account, right? So you can simply go on and and, and um, you know apply that uh, um, policy or the rule, you know, that can uh, remove all the you know the, uh, the the privileges, you know, that can uh, damage your uh, high-risk assets. Right? And finally, um, uh, in in the adoption stage, you will be configuring uh, you know the custom reports and anomaly uh, alerts, which uh, somewhat uh, showed right. So like a statistical anomalies and in, in, in the rule based, so where you know your um, the operations team will pretty much uh, leverage on a day to day basis to to monitor and and mitigate your risk. Okay, so and and finally, you know um, what would be the typical. Um, you know, activities the operations uh, team or the security operations team will do with this uh, on top of management, right? So um, they will be continuously monitoring uh, all the uh, anomalies, uh, alerts, and, and risky identities, and also for our remediations, right? So another core objective is to uh, enforce the least privilege uh, principles, you know, by um, you know setting up the policies and workflows and stuff like that. You know, you can uh, go for on-demand, um, you know, uh, functions, and and the administrators will be, um, um, you know, uh, setting up those and and approving. Uh, uh, based on the request and and also you know uh, the the reports which uh, Samba uh, showed you know it will give a lot of insights into our high risk identities uh, be it in, um, in 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 users or system identities managed identities and key wall and the keys from key walls like uh, you know like right? you will see uh, the PCA score for each of these and then you will be able to prioritize um, you know your uh, identities, and then you know you can take in uh, remediation actions like right sizing, right? So right sizing is a very um, a critical activity, um, you know, for a continuous um, uh, monitoring aspect. You know, will be applying uh, the uh, applying uh, the functions, and also uh, supporting uh, the forensic uh, forensic audit. So you will, you will be leveraging the reports. This all way, you know, the the operations team will be engaged on a day to day basis and and make sure that you know your uh, the public cloud assets are secured and and reduce your uh, permission risks. So with that I will uh, hand over to Stacy for for a summary. Um, thank you to Prakash and to Samba for that information that you've just shared. Um, fantastic insight there into into entry permissions management. So, um, in summary. Microsoft Entry Permissions Management is really going to give you that essential cross-cloud visibility, that capability to discover and to assess every action performed by every identity on every resource and truly understand your cloud identity risk as it is today. Um, the solution is really going to help improve your security posture and strengthen that zero trust strategy, helping to enforce the principle of least privilege with those key automations, the ability to remediate and manage identities, uh, their over permissions, the permissions that they need on demand. Um, and overall, Microsoft Entry Permissions Management is really going to help you to reduce permission risk with all of the above that I've just mentioned, um, plus monitoring and an alerting. Um, that's really going to be able to draw your attention to the misuse and malicious exploitation of permissions that result in a much unwanted breach. Um, so if you want to get hands on yourself with Microsoft Entry Permissions Management, you have the ability, as um, Prakash said, to take a 45 day trial right now. Um, and work with Microsoft or our trusted partner Wipro um, to help you understand your cloud identity risk as it is today. So to get started, all you need to do is respond to the form that we're going to share with you in the chat um, and Microsoft or Wipro will be in touch to take you through onboarding that trial. 
here are some additional resources so you can learn a little bit more about Microsoft Entry Permissions Management. Check out some of these additional resources when we share them with you after today's session. And we would like to now invite all of you um, who have joined us today to come off mute and ask some questions, have some dialogue with us. Um, and again, please feel free to, to fill in the survey whilst we're having some conversations. Yeah, so um, I have um, you know, a question, uh, actually, Stacey, that uh, most of our customers and, and partners will ask. It's because in uh, Azure AD uh, today, we already have uh, some uh, privileged identity management solution, which is called PIN. And so now many partners and customers are asking, so whether if we do have now intra permission management, should we still use Microsoft PIN uh, or should we just use the EPM, uh, you know, basically to manage uh, the, uh, you know, privilege, um, high privilege for our users? So um, I do have Fair some question. insight about that. Yeah. So I don't know if if you you want to share your thought um, as well, uh, Stacey. Or... Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I think my thoughts really around it are that um, entry permissions management takes it to that next level. So, um, you know, PIM is really going to give you, um, you know, elevation of, of, of the entirety, uh, whereas EPM is going to get really granular in the information that it gives. So it's going to really dive down into the permissions within the role and say, well, hey, these are not being used. So let's take these away and let's get granular with what access we have um, and let's take that away so that we can reduce the risk even further um, so it's that complementary that next advanced step um, you know to securing and achieving um, the privilege of least principle when it comes to um, you know that zero trust strategy that most of our customers are working to today yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah absolutely just to add on you know as, as, as Dave mentions you know EPM can be leveraged for granular like a task level right so the, the uh, Azure the PIM uh, can be used for the role level elevation, but if you want to really go for the task level, like if you really wanted to, you know, get access to, you know, spin up a VM or, you know, delete the uh, S3 bucket, then, you know, you leverage the, the e uh, EPM, you know, for time bound access. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And also uh, the PIM today is only for Azure, uh, whereas the EPM, intra permission management also do cover um, you know, GCP, uh, um, AWS, uh, and Azure, of course. So, yeah, this is really something that many customers are really struggling with it. So, uh, for now, our recommendation would be a side-by-side -side, uh, type of usage. Um, and we also know that, uh, you know, in our roadmap, we are looking at ways to really integrate uh, those two features to just give, you know, one console uh, to be able to manage the, uh, you know, high privilege uh, users. So yeah, with that, I think we are almost uh, at times. Okay, well, thank you everybody for, for joining us today. We really do appreciate you coming along. Um, please look out for the recording. It's gonna come via email in the next week or so. Um, and we look forward to hopefully continuing any conversations with you on Microsoft Entry Permissions Management um, in the coming future. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you all for joining us. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.